Hello, welcome to another NYU Respiratory Department neonatal transportation training video. We're going to talk about high frequency transportation. So we have our phasotron circuit that we're going to use. That's the package. This is the item. So what we have here is our phasotron circuit. We have a driving pressure line clear going through the circuit using the ventilation action is happening at the spring valve right here. A little bit of air entrainment. We have an expiratory port valve with a PEEP valve right here. And this is our patient with our little test lung right here. And red pressure line gauge where we get our readings from. All right, so we're gonna hook in our red pressure line to the back of the transporter, red to red, right here, high frequency, and clear to clear, snaps in like Lego. And we're going to point our knob towards high frequency. As soon as we point it, the gas source towards high frequency, the action starts. And we can see right here on our monitor, what we're monitoring is very simple. We're monitoring frequency. We're monitoring mean airway pressure. All right. Frequency is 497. We knob our frequency knob right here. Right. 500 is a decent starting point for frequency. If we increase the frequency, we are improving oxygenation. If we decrease the frequency, we're blowing off CO2. So you kind of edge towards where you, you're more, your goal is. Is it more a CO2 issue? You'll have lower frequencies, maybe towards 400. Or secretion clearance, lower frequencies, more towards 400. Higher frequencies would be for oxygenation issues if we're really having trouble with oxygenation, but the CO2 is not our number one concern. So 500 is a decent middle point, and we could increase towards 600 or decrease towards 400, depending on our goal, oxygenation or CO2 removal. This is our mean airway pressure. We control our mean airway pressure with our peep valve right here. So as I open or close the peep valve, I'm changing my mean airway pressure. We're going to match the mean airway pressure that the patient is on when we pick them up and we're gonna monitor to make sure that these settings are working for them. We're not gonna move right away. So we knob our peep valve to control our mean airway pressure. You see another number here right above it, but that other number will always be matching the main mean airway pressure. So that smaller number is called average inhalation pressure. We don't have to concern so much with it. We're really looking at our mean airway pressure. The last thing we're doing is our amplitude. That's our chest wiggle for our baby. We want a proper chest wiggle from the clavicle to the umbilicus. We could start at a two o'clock position on this knob. If we increase amplitude, that's faster wiggle. If we decrease amplitude, it's less wiggle. So like I say, we could start a baby on two and then adjust their amplitude towards chest wiggle. We adjust the frequency towards our goal while maintaining SATs, maintaining proper end tidal CO2 that we're goal towards, taking ABGs, making sure the ABGs are stable for us to travel. So chest wiggle, frequency, and mean airway pressure peep valve. Those are the three knobs we're gonna affect. We're gonna match the mean airway pressure for the patient. We're gonna get a proper chest wiggle with the amplitude, and we're gonna affect our frequency towards what we want. Increase frequency oxygenation, decrease frequency for CO2 removal, or 500 sort of towards the middle, 450 to 500 towards the middle. All right, that's high frequency transportation. Um, very basic instruction, how to set it up for the patient and how to use it. We're never gonna leave. We're gonna set the patient in, the, when we pick up the patient, we're gonna put them on this system and monitor them for at least 30 minutes. Get a blood gas while they're on this. Get a chest x-ray while they're on this and monitor that the patient is stable and tolerating this therapy or this ventilation before we put them in the isolate and move them out, all right?